Hello my friends, it's time for something different, eh, at least for my channel. That's right, it's time to see if I can beat the Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy Color using only a team of Paris and Parasect. Why Parasect? I mean, I'm Paraspector, Parasect's my boy, why wouldn't I do this? For those who don't know, there was a Game Boy Color game based on the ever popular Pokemon trading card game, or TCG for short. Released in 1998 in Japan and then in mid to late 2000 in North America, Australia, and Europe. It had some pretty decent reviews, and as I was a Pokemon child of the 90s myself, I for sure went and bought this game when it came out. I wasn't one of those lame casuals who only collected the cards and put them in a binder to show off, oh no. My friends and I became Pokemon TCG masters, being the best like no one ever was. Sure, I had a binder, but that bad boy was for properly securing absolute beasts to unleash for some sweet, sweet cardboard victories. If you haven't played the Pokemon TCG, I'll just briefly describe it, because while it is a simple game, there are a bit of nuances. Essentially, you and your opponent each have 60 card decks in which you must find Pokemon through drawing cards to build a team. Pokemon can attack by finding energy cards, also through random draw, and can evolve once you find the proper evolution cards to make them stronger. Each time you cause an opponent's Pokemon to faint, you get a card prize. Repeat until one person is out of Pokemon or prizes. That's basically the gist of it. So what in God's name am I doing here, and why is this a rough challenge? Well, what this means is that in my entire deck of 60 cards, only 4 of them are the basic Pokemon Paris, and 4 of them are its evolution Parasect. 4 is the max you can have in a deck per card, so those are the only ones I can ever attack with. A Parasect card can only be placed over a Paris, so I'm limited to only 4 usable cards in the entire deck at first. Let's take a look at our buggy friends and see what they can do. Paris is a grass type and has only 40 HP. That's not great. With 2 colorless energy, I can use Scratch for 20 damage and 2 grass energies can put the other Pokemon to sleep by using Spore. Using Spore is a bit risky as I will not be doing any damage and after a coin flip I would need Tails for the other Pokemon to stay asleep and can't attack on their turn, otherwise the move did absolutely nothing. Paris can retreat for 1 energy and has a double weakness to Fire. That Fire Gym is going to take a ton of luck. But the real star of the show is my homie Parasect, the inspiration to my logo for this channel, my favorite mushroom bug with its cold, dead, expressionless eyes. I think it's cute. Parasect is basically just an improved Paris with very similar stats. Parasect gets 20 more HP, which is actually huge, and can deal 30 damage with Slash using 3 colorless energy. Spore, the retreat cost, and the weakness are exactly the same as Paris. And that's it. Honestly, it's not a great card to use. This Game Boy Color game is too old to have any other Paris or Parasect variations, and believe me, there are more in modern day. So let's see if I can beat all 8 Clubmasters and the 4 Grandmasters with only my team of Paris and Parasect. Yeah, and some helper cards along the way of course. A deck has to contain 60 cards. I begin my journey with the tutorial, which I can skip because believe me, it's not exciting. Then I'm given my choice of Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle base decks. I didn't look ahead to see what cards are included, but I had to go with Bulbasaur because it's a grass type deck and I need to get my Shroom Boys fast. And of course there are none. Thankfully I can fight the same trainer over and over until I do get 4 Paris and 4 Parasect, so I can't actually do the challenge, which is fighting the Clubmasters with my Shroomies. Once you beat a trainer, you are given 2 booster packs containing certain cards at random. Paris and Parasect are only found in the Articuno Mystery Packs, so I need to find the trainers that give those out. Since a lot of the Rock-type Pokémon are double weak to grass, it's time to find some poor scamp with a Rock-type deck to target. And that poor scamp is my new friend Matthew. It's time to take Matthew outside and show him what it's like. Don't mind me, Matthew. I'm only here to stomp you over and over, never letting up for mercy. After one victory, I got my first Paris. That means the challenge can now officially start and I need to modify my deck to see if I can win some matches with only this one Paris. Everybody else has got to go. After a couple attempts, I actually did it. I beat Matthew with only a single Paris in the entire deck. Matthew's self-esteem dropped immeasurably that day. Paris and Parasect aren't anything rare, so I should be able to get four of each after a small handful of packs. And, well, I'm here to tell you that I couldn't have been more wrong. I'm not even joking, I think I gave Matthew the business no less than 30 times, and I still walked away with only three Paris and four Parasect. I could not find that fourth Paris. All Matthew wanted to do was take his cards and go home and eat dinner, but I wouldn't let him. 
I smoked that kid so many times that his card started to tear. I made him buy me so many booster packs that he can no longer go to college. I was like a madman, but his packs still weren't giving me the final mushroom that I needed. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I let Matthew go home to see his mom, leaving his poor rock Pokemon as mere pebbles. It was time for me to move on with one Paris short of a full deck. So I went into the room to the north to fight the rock club master to get my badge. Will Gene suffer the same horrible fate as Matthew? Let's find out. The match starts with Paris against his Rhyhorn and two on the bench. Rhyhorn goes down easily and my prize is my shining star, a Parasect. His last two are two Onyx, so things are looking pretty good so far. I'm one turn away from winning and he draws a Diglett. He's just stalling at this point. And just like that, Diglett gets stomped and I win my first medal. This will probably be the only super easy battle due to all of his Pokemon being weak to my Paris team. Matthew should have warned him to stay away. My next stop is to the Electric Club. Isaac is the leader and he won't let me fight until I beat all of his surrounding trainers, which will be a recurring trend. I do so also by gaining a bunch of new cards and I still do not have my fourth Paris. I have no explanation for this, just bad luck I guess. But hey, I'm still able to win matches so it's not the end of the world. Time for Isaac. He starts out with a pretty strong Electabuzz against my lone Paris. Luckily I drew a Parasect as well. After a while I start getting some bad paralysis luck and there's nothing I can do. I use Scoop Up to bring everything back to my hand but his Magnemite takes out my Paris. 0 for 1. Attempt number 2 goes a lot better and I'm down to only 2 prizes left but he eventually uses Self Destruct and blows up his stupid Magnemite taking out Parasect. Attempt number 3. I eventually get him down to 2 prizes and he starts pulling some shifty stuff, constantly retreating his Pokemon. Finally he brings out a Kangaskhan without enough energy to hurt me and I take it out claiming my last prize, giving me the electric metal. Not terrible, but it did take 3 tries. I'm still way too scared of the Fire Club, so it's on to the Fighting Club where I fully intend to talk about Fight Club. My plan is to get a few more packs to actually get that 4th Paris and maybe some good trainer cards along the way. Also, just to point out that there are a lot more Pokemon types in the main games than in the card game. A lot of types get grouped together into one, so Rock, Ground, and Fighting type Pokemon all tend to get grouped into the Fighting type, just with different resistances and weaknesses. So these Fighting cards will take the same energies as the Rock ones, but I can't obliterate them in the same fashion. Okay, time to take on Mitch after I defeat his lackeys. First Strike deck? Okay, let's do this. You are going down, Mitch. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, for real this time. Okay, seriously, it's on. Okay, for real. So my first attempt goes quite poorly. His Machop and Hitmonlee absolutely steamroll my Paris as he got some early energy luck. Attempt number two. He starts out with Hitmonchan who takes out half of my only Paris's health on the first turn. One more hit and it's over. But, I start to get some great card luck. I'm able to hold him off with a combination of Pokemon Center to fully heal, getting a Parasect and a Defender card to block 20 damage, followed by a Professor Oak to get 7 new cards. His Hitmonchan goes down, then Machop, then his 2 Hitmonlee, all from this original Parasect. What an absolute monster he is. I get down to 2 prizes left and his final Machop and Mankey are no match, securing my victory and getting the fighting medal. Maybe Parasect isn't so bad after all. Next up, the Water Club. I gotta take out some swimmers first and... Oh my lordy, there he is, coming out of hiding. I'm three medals in already, and I finally got my fourth Paris. Now these punks don't stand a chance. Also, that took way longer than it needed to. Come on, it's a common card. Next up, Water Master Amy. Attempt number one does not go well. She starts with a Lapras, who is way too bulky to take down early. I end up stalling a little bit, but she holds on for the victory. Attempt number two is a test of endurance, let me tell you. I certainly won't go beat for beat since it was a 14 minute battle. She starts with a Squirtle and I get an attacking Parasect on turn two. Good start. Just when I'm about to take down Squirtle, she evolves it into Wartortle. This Wartortle is a pain because it can hit for 40 with Bite, which instantly knocks out any Paras and really hurts Parasect. I use Gust of Wind to get that War Turtle out of there to get a couple easy prizes from some Squirtle and Horsey. Although Horsey has Smokescreen, which makes me miss a few times. Annoying. After that is her Lapras, which wasn't too bad, although Confusion is also annoying, which can cause me to hit myself on a coin flip. Lapras eventually goes down, and finally that War Turtle, and all that's left is her Sea King. 
She can't get enough energy, it can only hit me for 10, so I take it out in a couple turns, earning the water badge. We're now halfway through, and I'm feeling good. Except for that fire club, I'm still terrified of it. On to duel against my foliage brethren. Like usual, I need to take out a few grassy ladies before I can take down the weed master herself, Nikki. The ladies aren't a problem, so on to Nikki. I get a decent draw of two Paris, and she starts out with an Execute. To be completely honest, there really isn't too much to say about this battle. She only manages to use a couple Execute and Bulbasaur the entire match, and I end up winning with a team of three Parasect, all with full energy, and I didn't lose anybody the entire time. I kept removing her energies and taking out the Pokemon she tried to power up fast. So yeah, that was an easy grass medal earned. Only three more to go now, let's finish this. Along the way, you're forced to fight this derp Ronald, who is your rival in the game. He's more of an annoyance than anything, and beating him isn't necessary. He gives you rare cards if you win, but I don't care about those. It shrooms only for me, baby. I lost to him twice at this point, but I'm not concerned. Time for the Psychic Master Murray. Luckily, I can go right into the battle without fighting his friends. Attempt number one is rough. He starts out with a Kangaskhan, which is very dangerous, as he's pretty tanky and has fetch for one energy, which can get him to draw an extra card every turn to power up his bench. And this is what he does. I get a Parasect early, but this is where it all goes to hell. Murray uses Scoop Up to bring his damaged Kangaskhan back to his hand, so I don't even get a prize for it, and he brings out the mighty demon lord himself, Mr. Mime. I literally can't even attack this fool with my Parasect because of his ability. You see, Mr. Mime has the ability Invisible Wall, which means he can only be hit by attacks of 20 or less. An interesting ability, sure, but it renders my Parasect useless against him, and I would need to keep a Paras around just for this reason. And Mr. Mime has Meditate, which keeps getting more powerful the more damage counters I have. I'm going to have to rethink this strategy. I basically stall a few times with Spore to see if I can get a Paris, but no dice. I'm out. Deuces. Attempt number two. I get a pretty great draw, actually. Two Paris, a Parasect, a double colorless energy, and as I'll find out to be a big help, a mysterious fossil. I haven't really mentioned these, but they're basically stalling cards that I have a few of in my deck. They act as a basic Pokemon, but they can't attack or do anything at all except be a 10 hit point shield. In other decks, they can turn into fossil Pokemon, but that's irrelevant for this deck. Murray opens with a Chansey, who can take a ton of hits. I also see that he has a sketchy Mr. Mime on his bench, but now I'm smarter with more knowledge. I keep a Paris handy and work on taking out Chansey with a quick Parasect. I do so, and he brings out that Mr. Mime. Oh no! But, little does he know, I have a Switch handy, and can bring in the star of this round, Paris. Mr. Mime goes down in two hits like the soy boy that he is. Easy. Then Murray does something really stupid. He uses an energy removal on my Paris, uses Gust of Wind to force me to bring out the mysterious fossil because reasons. He whips out an Abra to take out the fossil, allowing me to simply bring out Parasect and take out Abra in one hit. All he has left is Kangaskhan, which I take out over time, all while removing his energy cards, giving me the Psychic Metal. So, so far I've defeated all of these masters in two attempts or less, except for the electric one. Weird. I thought it would be more difficult at this point. Only two remain, including the fire one. But it's time to go to the science club, like the real nerd that I am. What exactly is the science club, since clearly science is not a Pokemon type? Well, kind of like in the main game, scientists and super nerd trainers use a combination of poison types, some electric, some normal. It's kind of a mixed bag. So now it's time to take on the king of science himself, Rick. Obviously this guy is the sole inspiration for Rick and Morty many years later. He starts off with a Grimer, who can paralyze with a coin flip, and then things go poorly. He is able to evolve it into a Muck pretty quick, who just demolishes my team. Muck has Sludge, which could take out Paris in one hit with a successful coin flip. Not good. Attempt number two. Rick Sanchez starts off with a... Mewtwo? Jesus! I do want to point out something humorous, though. Each Pokemon has a level, which doesn't really mean anything in the context of the card game. It just kind of adds flavor text to it. So it's my level 8 Paris up against a level 60 Mewtwo. I quickly turn that level 8 Paris into the mighty level 28 Parasect, who just kind of takes out Mewtwo easily. Sucks to suck. Then he brings out a Grimer with that annoying nasty goo attack that can paralyze. He starts to build a bench with more Grimer, Mewtwo, and coughing. Thankfully he does not draw any muck or wheezing, and I can work on taking out these weaklings, and I include Mewtwo into that. Although his level 53 Mewtwo does take out my Parasect. 
That is the only prize that Grandpa Rick gets though, securing me the victory with my science badge. That bad boy is going up on the fridge. Only one more medal remains and... Oh god, it's time. I need to just jump right into the fire with my mushroom bugs. I'm sorry my friends, but I have to cast you into the flames. So, any guesses on how many attempts this will take me? I basically need to rely on draw luck for this one because I'm guessing my Paris will generally be taken out in one to two hits every time. Okay, here we go. I surprisingly get a pretty decent draw on the first try. Two Paris, a Parasect, and a double colorless energy to attack on the first turn. Ken brings out a Jigglypuff? Maybe this won't be so bad. Jigglypuff goes down easily and he brings out a Chansey? Maybe I can win because he isn't even using fire types. Unfortunately, my luck ends there. Chansey can take way too many hits, and he's able to power up some random Growlithe on his bench, all while getting an Arcanine to conjure the fires of hell onto my friends. Arcanine's flamethrower does a whopping 100 damage to my boys, but there is one shred of hope. To do so, he must also discard a fire energy, so I could have the chance down the road. Obviously, I lose here though. Attempt number two. It starts out somewhat similar with Ken opening with a Jigglypuff, except I only get one Paris. I do have a Professor Oak, so I use up some cards, and if I run out of options, I can get a whole new hand. Right before I'm just about to take down Jigglypuff, it uses Pound, taking my one Paris down to half health. Not good. I use up my Super Potion, which also makes me lose one Grass Energy, so I'm just holding on now. After Jigglypuff, he brings in a different Jigglypuff, but he does get a Growlithe for his bench. I gotta attack quick. This Jigglypuff has Double Edge, which can knock out a Paris in one hit while doing 20 damage to itself. Thankfully, I managed to use a Defender the turn before, which blocks 20 of the damage. I would have lost here if I didn't use that. I am able to heal up, remove the Double Colorless Energy, and prevent a second Double Edge. Right before I take out Jigglypuff, I manage to draw a Parasect. Thank God. Growlithe and Chansey remain. He doesn't get enough energy in time, so Growlithe is taken out easily. But now, it's time for Tanky Chansey. This is where it gets crazy. Chansey can protect itself from all damage if there is a heads coin flip when it uses Scrunch. With 4 energy, Chansey has its own double edge, which does a whopping 80 damage to me and itself. As long as I can hurt Chansey a little bit, it's basically a self-destruct. And I'm still doing this with one single Parasect. It starts to become a test of wits as Chansey keeps using Scrunch, I keep using Spore, and unfortunately, he starts building a bench with a Tauros and another Chansey. Also, where are the scary fire types? This is a normal deck with some Growlithe thrown in. Then he goes for the Double Edge, taking us both out. Back to another Parasect vs Chansey standoff. The same Double Edge happens, taking us both out, but I'm down to only one prize left for me to win. I managed to get three Paris, thanks to some revives and draw luck, and he brings in Tauros. After this, my fungus men are too much for him and all he can do is keep discarding energy to retreat. The final blow hits Tauros, giving me the fire metal on the second try. I can't believe this, but maybe if he actually used some fire type Pokemon it would have gone a different way. But I did it. I got all 8 medals using only my level 8 Paris and level 28 Parasect combination. It's time to take on this game's version of the Elite Four and see if I can win this challenge. I have not looked ahead to any cards they use, so I'll be going in blind. Let's do this. I enter the Pokemon Dome and meet the last four trainers, one of which is the Fire Queen Courtney. Oh, come on. She's up first with her legendary Moltres deck. Yeah, I get taken out in one hit with a flare from Growlithe and immediately get thrown out like Jazz in the Fresh Prince. Uh, yeah, this is gonna take a while. Attempt number two. Okay, she's only starting with one Vulpix. Maybe I have a chance to... Oh, what is this? Oh dear god, Moltres has Fire Giver, which allows her to obtain 1-4 to four fire energy at random from her deck. Awesome. I last a bit longer this time, but she's able to get too many fire energies for me to hold off Arcanine. Attempt number 3. It starts out Paris vs Growlithe, and I get a couple Parasect, energy removals, and a double colorless energy. I'm definitely okay with this. I wanted to save the energy removal for this new Moltres she drew, but I have to use it on Growlithe or else I could lose on the next turn. I take out Growlithe and get Parasect in the meantime. Next is Moltres, who can annihilate my team if she gets 4 fire energies on it. I gotta act fast. And I do. Who says Parasect can't beat this legendary bird constructed from fire? Thanks to a plus power, Slash takes Moltres down in 2 hits. 
Here's where it gets tricky. She starts powering up Magmar, who can do 20 damage with one energy from a smokescreen, and can possibly prevent me from attacking. I decide to use Gust of Wind to bring in Vulpix instead, who has Confuse Ray, which is technically worse because I can end up hurting myself. Oops. I use a Pokemon Center to heal up with losing all energy cards, and use a Professor Oak to get more options fast. Vulpix ends up being a nuisance with said Confuse Ray, and she eventually evolves it into Ninetales. Luckily, I start to also build up my bench, but I'm not drawing many Parasect cards. With some coin luck, Ninetales goes down and Magmar is up. Now I have to deal with Smokescreen and Confuse Ray. I need two successful coin flips now to even deal damage. I end up taking myself out with Confuse Ray, and now I only have two Paris and a Mysterious Fossil left. I use Gust of Wind to bring in Vulpix, and use a combination Professor Oak and Bill to get a bunch of new cards. This is risky, as if I run out of cards in my deck, I lose. I end Vulpix's life, and I only need two more prizes. My Paris goes down, and then I take out Magmar with the next one. One prize left. Could it happen? Then, she gets the Moltres that brings her energy. She only gets one though, so I still have a chance. I get Magmar down to 10 health, as she wipes out Paris with one Fire Punch. But, it's over for her. All I have to do is use Scratch with the next Paris, and I actually pull it off in three tries. Wow, that was my longest battle yet too. Round 2 is Steve and his legendary Zapdos deck. I'm a little nervous about this one, since Electric was the only club that took three tries. And I'm right so far. The combination of Electabuzz and Zapdos was too much. Attempt number one was not a memorable one. Time to go take out my frustrations on Matthew. I mean, I mean a try attempt number two. Attempt number two goes just about as well, although I hold on a little longer. Electabuzz is too good early on. I did get lucky with Zapdos knocking itself out with a Tails Flip though, so at least that was satisfying. But the combination of Electabuzz and Jolteon was too much this time. Attempt number three. This one is hilarious, you're gonna love this. It's one Paris versus one Eevee, and I get a double colorless energy. All I need to do is take down Eevee for 30 more hit points. Heh, <laughs> not gonna happen. He draws a Zapdos with the ability to deal 30 damage to one of my random Pokemon. I only have one, so Paris takes the hit. He uses Bill to draw two cards, one being another of the same Zapdos. Bam, match over. Attempt number four. Yep. God, I hate Electabuzz. Attempt number five. This time is my level 8 Paris against his level 40 Zapdos. Of course, he immediately brings in the other Zapdos that does 30 damage to mine, so I'm down to 10 HP just like that. The Zapdos I'm fighting needs 4 electric energy to even attack, so I can at least buy some time. I immediately start removing energy and start wearing it down with Scratch. I get a lucky Professor Oak draw to get a new hand, which includes more Paris, Parasect, and energy removal. He retreats the injured Zapdos and brings in a Voltorb. I take the opportunity to one-shot it with a plus power before he can start powering up the others. He brings in the healthy Zapdos that needs 3 energies to attack, and this is a good thing. It has 100 HP, but it can also buy me some time. I do take it out and get some powered up Parasect in the process. Eevee is next, so it's time to act before he gets a Jolteon. I take a real risky move here and use a Gust of Wind to bring in Electabuzz to try and get it out quick while I have a powered up team. He does end up Thunder Punching my Parasect, but he flips a Tails, hitting himself for 10, leaving only 30 HP. A one shot from the next Parasect. Phew. Electabuzz goes down, then the injured Eevee that got blown away. Only two prizes left. He gets another Electabuzz, but weirdly brings in another Eevee. Weird decision. Eevee goes down, so all I need to do is beat this last Electabuzz to win. I get paralyzed, and he knocks out Parasect the next turn. It's time to unleash my super energy removal. Only 30 HP to go, but he can still paralyze me with one energy. Uh, oh. He used a switch to bring in a Voltorb? What? Yeah, all I do now is use a plus power to one-shot Voltorb for the victory. Well, that was anticlimactic, but good god, thankfully I won. Only two Grandmasters left. Round three in this gauntlet is Jack, with his legendary Articuno deck. He begins with a Lapras, who isn't too much of a problem. However, he is able to stall for time by getting an Articuno who can annihilate my team. He uses Lapras and Seal to get energies in Articuno, but it's no use. I lose pretty quick. Attempt number two. It starts with my one Paris against Seal. I get some pretty comical luck with getting energy removal, so every time he tried powering up his benched Articuno, I kept yeeting those energies off of him. I did this four times. The Seal was there to take hits, as well as a second Seal and a Chansey. Why does everyone have a Chansey? 
Eventually, I get a Parasect, who can take out Chansey in 4 hits as opposed to 6 with a Paras, and that's if he doesn't heal. I get some more Parasect to power up in reserves, and he brings in a Ditto, still stalling to get his Articuno ready. Ditto goes down, and he brings in a third seal as Cannon Fodder. By this point, once I take out Seal, I'll only have one prize left, so I have to hope I can hold off Articuno for the final blow. He surprisingly manages to put one energy on this seal, so his headbutt starts to take out some of my HP. This does matter because Articuno's Blizzard does 50 damage. He downs Parasect, but I have one more left. I revive a Paris and actually draw another one, so I start to power up the healthy one while I try to hold on with Parasect. Articuno and Parasect bring each other down to 10 health, but I can bring in my tiny level 8 Paris to deal the final blow, giving me the victory. That was the easiest of the three, although that energy removal luck was huge. Only one battle remains. Here we go with the finale. The ultimate Pokemon TCG Master, Rod, and his legendary Dragonite deck. I get an awful first hand, and for one of the only times during this challenge, I'm struggling to get energies. He starts with a Kangaskhan, and I know this can be dangerous because of the more cards he's able to draw with his fetch move. In hindsight, I wish I left it in there. Let me explain. I use Gust of Wind to bring in one of his Dratini to get a quick prize card. I cannot seem to get any energies, and Dratini can only manage to do 10 damage at a time. I keep trying to stall with heals and getting some mysterious fossils. Eventually, he evolves his Dratini into Dragonair, who can use Slam, doing 30 damage with 2 head coin flips. He gets 4 energy on this Dragonair, so he is all set if he draws a Dragonite. I get a gust of wind, so I try to continue stalling. I bring in the Kangaskhan with no energy on it, so it would be difficult for him to retreat. He then uses a Professor Oak, and it hits me. He's down to 29 cards, so if he keeps using fetch on his Kangaskhan, I have the possibility to have him run out of cards in his deck, and I'll win. The more energies he keeps adding to bench ones and using fetch to draw more cards, the better chance I have. I can keep throwing out mysterious fossils to buy some time too. I get enough energy and a Parasect to start dealing damage, and he brings out his souped up Dragonair. He is down to under 20 cards now, and it is possible that Dragonair deals no damage with bad coin flip luck. He starts using Hyper Beam, which only does 20 damage, but removes energy cards from me. Not good. I get some decent luck actually, and things are going to plan. I stall with all four mysterious fossils and some injured Paris, although he's able to get prizes from those. He eventually gets two Dragonite out and a Charmeleon, which is even more scary since it's a fire type. I get so incredibly close and he only has three cards left when his Charmeleon is too much for my Mushroom Boys. I so wanted that to be the epic conclusion, winning by decking him. I gave it the old college try, but it's time to try again. Rowdy Roddy opens with a Dratini and a Magikarp on the bench. Well, that seems easy. They combine for 70 total HP, so let's get him down quick. Dratini goes down in two hits, but instead of a fast win, he starts to build a bench. He gets a Charmander, and then a Lapras, and then a Kangaskhan with a bunch of health each. I lose Paris and start stalling with a Mysterious Fossil. He starts building up a Lapras, but I answer that with some E-removal cards. He sacrifices his next Charmander, and I play both Parasite cards, hoping to find energy with a Professor Oak. The plan works out well, and I work at taking out Charmander and Magikarp, leaving one prize left. All he does is play yet another Charmander instead of Lapras, so I win in two more turns. That was honestly a pretty easy final fight, but I actually did it. I beat the Pokemon trading cart to- oh. Oh, I have a rival fight left. Really? That tool Ronald that already beat me twice? That's the final battle? I need to summon all of my aggression and go ham on him. I need to pretend that he's Matthew all over again, begging me to go easy on him while I take booster pack after booster pack away from his allowance money. It's time to end this. So like the round against Rod, Ronald starts with a little Dratini. Shouldn't be a problem. And I'm right, now he's down to a single Dratini left unless he starts drawing Pokemon. He doesn't, but he does evolve Dratini into Dragonair. This could be a problem as my first Paris is about to meet his demise. Just when I think it's over, I decide to use my super energy removal to hopefully get a few more options. He puts down a Kangaskhan and Eevee, so yeah, this is going to be an uphill battle now. I decide to use Gust of Wind to bring in his Eevee to try and hopefully get a prize. He gets a second Kangaskhan, and then... Oh dear god, he has a Moltres with the Fire Giver ability to snatch some fire energies. And of course, he gets all four at random. What an absolute chad. And to top it off, he uses Scoop Up to bring Moltres back so he can play it again to get more fire energies. 
Then he evolves the Eevee I brought in into Vaporeon. I gotta think of something fast. Luckily for me, Vaporeon, a Pokemon known for a lot of health, only has 60 HP, so that's doable. He does his stupid little fire giver thing again and starts powering up Kangaskhan. I'm thinking this is not going to be my round, as I'm running out of options fast. I take out Vaporeon and he sends in Moltres, currently with no energy on it, so I have a few turns to do something. But there is also a shred of hope. Moltres has Dive Bomb, which one-shots any Paris or Parasect, but only with the coin flip of heads. I try to buy some time by using Spore instead of Scratch, since this baby Paris can only hold on for so long. I know Ronald has the energy cards. Also, still haven't found a Parasect. I go for Spore again because now Moltres needs two heads coin flips in a row to even hit me. One to wake up, one to succeed in Dive Bomb. And it actually works for a few turns. Until it doesn't and my poor boy gets completely obliterated in the face. I try my luck with some coin flips going my way and bring in my next Paris. Oh, and now he has a fully powered Dragonite too. Very cool. It was at this moment that I thought about my strategy last time. If I can't overpower him with my baby Paris, maybe I can somehow hold on long enough to have him run out of cards. I go back to my strategy of using Spore in hopes that he flips at least one Tails out of two flips. And it actually does pay off for a few turns. Then he uses a Bill to draw two cards. What a moron. But then my next Paris gets burned alive, so joke's on me. He's down to only three prizes left now. Now I try stalling with some mysterious fossils as he still needs a coin flip of tails to waste a turn and draw cards. Finally, I draw my first Parasect. Only took 10 minutes. He's now down to 19 more cards and an absolutely stacked team. I do my best to remove some energies from his healthies and keep trying to hold off with some lifeless fossils. He uses another bill. This is perfect. Maybe he'll use a Professor Oak next. I run out of fossils and set out my injured Paris like an awful person would do. I'm getting desperate now, but it's no good. Paris gets instantly cremated. Only two prizes left for him and 15 cards left. It's not looking good. All I have left now is one Parasect and I need a miracle to pull this off. I decide to go out in a blaze of glory and at least take out his Moltres finally since maybe my prize will be helpful. And what do you know, it's a Professor Oak. That's a risky move since I don't want to run out of cards myself before Ronald does. He brings in Dragonair who has Slam which does 30 damage per heads coin flip on two flips. He could win it here but he gets one tails. I revive a Paris and go for the Oak Man. Then the turning point happens. I draw a gust of wind and immediately bring in a Kangaskhan that he did not power up. Now remember, Kangaskhan has fetch, so maybe Ronald will be stupid enough to use it to draw two cards every turn. I'm banking on it. I take a huge risk and use Bill, putting me at less cards in my deck than he has. Then he does the one thing that I was scared of the most, except it's actually helping me. He plays the Moltres with Firegiver to lessen his deck even more. He only gets one fire energy, but he actually uses another scoop up to bring it back and do it again. Thank you, flawed AI. He brings three fire energies out of his deck, putting his deck at eight cards. This is getting close, but he can start putting energy on to retreat. I could take out Kangaskhan at any time, but I do not want to do that. Also, he gets smart and doesn't use fetch. Then he gets stupid again and starts putting energy on Dragonite instead. Uh, okay. I keep using Spore so that if he's asleep he can't even retreat, although he's not even attempting to do so. Ronald finally draws his last card. I'm one turn away. Then, it happens. He does nothing. I slash that Kangaskhan for one final blow to end my turn, actually giving me the victory. I cannot even believe I pulled that off. I beat the entire game using only Paris and Parasect for Pokemon, and the final battle in one attempt by decking him. Hilarious. I finally accomplished my goal of winning those sought-after legendary cards- wait, wait, I don't care about these. Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, and Dragonite? No thanks, bro. I'll be sure to throw them away when I walk out of here. So was that challenge that hard? Surprisingly, no, it really wasn't. Every battle was won in two attempts or less, except for only three, and two out of those were electric decks, weirdly enough. I'm also surprised at how much fun this was, too. I hope it came across as interesting to watch because it took a lot of adult life experience and knowledge to strategize accordingly. I am now smarter because of it. Do I think this challenge could be done using only Paris and omit Parasect? I don't know, but I'm no masochist. So now that I accomplished my goal and won this challenge, I think I have an old friend to visit and make amends. Oh, hello, Matthew. Oh no. 
You aren't going anywhere. <laughs>